What up, what up, what up, though? You know what's going down every time I upload. It's your man, Phoenix Sunny. Back with some more of that true story. No more, right? You know what I do. You know what I do. You don't know what I do? I'm glad you asked. I didn't think you would ask. I give you that news you can use. Oh, yeah. You know that. True story. You already know that. So like and subscribe if you're digging the vibe. You heard? Early and not late. Hey. We're going to do this one a little bit different. A little bit different. I know a lot of times I'm reacting to uh, some mainstream media news that's going on in the world. That's mainly what I do. But. I need y'all to know who I am. I need y'all to know why I am. The way I am. So. This me. Get to know Phoenix Sunny a little bit on a deeper level. You hear me? So we're going to talk about something that may be an issue for many people. Many, many people. And this may be an issue for some people that don't even know they have the issue. Anxiety. Anxiety, people. A lot of people are facing this issue. Some have done enough soul searching. Some got enough knowledge of the world. Not even itself. They have picked up on 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 signs of anxiety from seeing other people with anxiety, talk about it, and things of that nature. Well, me myself. I happen to be a black man. I happen to be a black man. I don't know if y'all noticed. Did y'all notice that? Y'all notice that? I happen to be a black man. Wow. Yes. I happen to be a black man that came up in a very urban community. Some might be saying, where'd you come up? Harlem, New York to be exact. Excuse me. Harlem and the Bronx. Let me be clear. I was born in that blue building, 135th and Lenox. Yes, sir, Harlem Hospital. Yeah, shout out. Shout out everybody on my Harlem. Oh, yeah. Shout out all my Harlem heads. What up, what up, what up, though? Yeah. Shout out all my peoples from the Bronx. What up, though? I don't live everywhere in the Bronx from, god dang, 233rd, White Plains Road, all the way to the South Bronx, Elder Avenue, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Twin Parks. I'm talking about uh, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about Simpson Street. I'm talking about Davidson Ave. I'm talking about University. I'm talking about all over the Bronx. You hear me? Done been all up and down the Bronx. Um, Harlem. I was only on the West Side, but that's neither here nor there. I came up in a very urban community, very black community. Um, a lot of people can identify with this. In the black community, we don't talk too much about mental issues. When we do talk about it, it's more so cracking jokes on it or mask, masking that thing, you know, put, putting, the, put, putting the cover on that thing, putting the Maybelline on it, you know, making it look real good, acting like it don't exist. That's kind of how mental issues go a lot of the times in the black community. True story. You already know that. True story, you know that. How many of us got cousins, family, whoever, sister, brother, mother, uncle, and they might be slow with comprehension? And we just dismiss that as, oh, they just a little slow. We, that's how we treat them when they're young. Oh, they just a little slow. Don't talk about them. They just they don't get it as fast as everybody else and things of that nature. What happens a lot of times in black communities, we don't teach our kids what they're going through. We don't teach our kids what they're going through. So they grow up with a whole, a lot of times, they grow up with all kinds of mental issues that don't go approach. Like I said, I gave one example of the slow person in the family. You see, he can't read that good, and, you know, he ain't getting things like everybody else, and, we'll, 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 you know, 
look both ways before you cross the street and things of that nature. For some reason, they do it. But the rate that they do the same things that everybody else do is not the same. We'll approach that. We'll look at that and act like it's not nothing, like it's normal for somebody to be behind the rest of the pack when it comes to what we would deem as normal things. Well, what we would deem as common sense and things of that nature. You realize a lot of people don't, stuff don't click as fast. You got to explain things a little bit more. Or you might have to explain, explain things a lot more. Or you have to speak a lot slower when it comes to certain people and certain things. You know? That's just one thing. That's just one. How many times we dealing with kids that got ADD, ADHD, you know? Or they got mental issues that they may have developed over the years. Mental issues they may have developed, like anxiety, like depression, like hyperaggression, things of that nature. For me, myself, I didn't realize for years, a long time, because I don't think I had it for a long time, but I realized as of now, being a grown man, 39 years old, I have anxiety. You know what else I come to find out about? It is not an easy issue to deal with. It's not. It's definitely not. So, as I come to know myself and I'm finding out that I have anxiety, I can look at a lot of other people and see the anxiety in them. Because I can identify, I can see myself in them. Some of you may be wondering, how do you identify with if you have anxiety? I can tell you some small signs. Um, if you have regular problems, just like everybody else, everybody in life has issues. Everybody's facing a problem. Um, things happen, you know. But when you find yourself thinking about things and then overthinking them, right? Some of us just might be like, well, I just overthink things and I'm always thinking. I'm just, I'm just a thinker. I'm always thinking. But then when you find yourself thinking and then thinking some more and then thinking some more and then thinking some more, but you're not moving and you're thinking, you're thinking all these thoughts in your head, all these thoughts in your head. But then after a while you realize I'm doing a whole lot of thinking, but I'm not necessarily making sense. I'm not making sense out of all these thoughts that's in my head. It's just a bunch of thoughts that I can't gather to say, okay, this is what I need to do with this. This is what I need to do with that. This is one. This is two. This is three. You get jumbled and you start low-key panicking in your head about these things that you think about because you can't come to a final conclusion about damn near any one thought. And then when you realize you can't come to a conclusion about a lot of these thoughts, you just find yourself repetitively thinking about the same things and then remixing the thought and you want to do something, but then you, you, you're thinking about how to do it, then you, you, think, you think yourself out of doing it. And then you come back to it and you want to do it, then you, you're thinking about doing it, you're thinking about all the ways you want to make it perfect, you want to do Everything becomes a cluster of just thoughts and feelings to the point where the littlest things start to become big to the point where you may be thinking about what you want to do in the next 10 years or the next five years and that should, that's something that you think about and you're working on. You know, then you got the right now, what you're doing to take care of yourself right now, what you're doing to take care of your family right now, things of that nature, right? And you find yourself, you find yourself not being yourself or wondering who yourself really is because you start doubting, you start doubting, you just, you just, 
you have all these thoughts, you have all these feelings, and you can't make sense of them. Now, when your lady be like, oh, you didn't, you didn't straighten that room up, and I thought you would, or why ain't you putting no gas in the car, and things of that nature, it be the simplest things. Now these things start to feel like somebody said, why did you leave your child at school and didn't go pick him up? Like, everything becomes magnified times 10. And you find yourself wrestling with yourself. You find yourself overreacting to the smallest things. You find yourself tripping about the smallest things. Why? Because you have the big things and the small things that you just you keep putting in this pile, in this cluster of thoughts and, and processing. And it's like all your thoughts are just stuck in processing. Like, you know, you know when you you click on your computer and it's it's loading, it's loading, it's loading, and that circle just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. That becomes your brain. Your brain is just spinning and spinning, and you just sitting there, you're waiting for it to click and stop loading. So you can just act on, <laughs> you know, whatever you were searching for, whatever you was working on. You waiting for that, that, that circle, you just, and you just hoping that it stops sometime soon so you can focus. Well, a lot of people are going through this issue. I'm one of them. And now I'll say this. If you are facing anxiety, depression, any of these type of things, you need to find somebody that is not afraid of talking about these issues and speak with them. It don't necessarily have to be a psychiatrist or a therapist. It don't necessarily have to be that. There's plenty of people out here who got some knowledge about anxiety. There's plenty of people out here who have a good ear and know how to do Q&A, know how to ask the right questions to unlock thoughts know how to ask the right things or say the right things to get a person to get off what's hidden inside of them because we all may be going through things and the thing that we feel we might be embarrassed about for whatever reason so we don't say anything about it we don't tell anybody about it we don't tell our girlfriend about it we don't tell our lady we don't tell our son we don't tell our mother you know, sometimes it's hard to tell people, your loved ones, hey, man, I feel like I'm going crazy because it could be taken out of concert. Sometimes it's hard to tell people, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Sometimes it's hard to tell people, hey, that thing that happened when I was young, when I got molested by my god brother, yeah, for some reason now, that's it's 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 doing something to my brain that that even happened. I know that I survived past that, but I just locked that away like as as if it didn't happen. And some of y'all may be facing some of those same type of issues. Some of y'all might have got touched or molested or abused, might have got beat on, all kind of issues that trigger things in your mind that allow you to go to that place and you, you, you get stuck there, you know? I've heard that when you go through some real traumatizing stuff, especially as a child, a lot of times you get stuck there mentally. You grow physically older, but a big part of you gets stuck right at that moment of being traumatized as a child. And I know that I have a few of these issues. When I was speaking about, you know, getting somebody getting touched by their God brother, I was speaking about myself. I've been a victim of molestation by a male. Luckily, I had the father and the mother that I had, 
And as soon as I said something about it, my father went and did something about it. And that made me feel secure in the fact that I knew I wasn't alone in that issue, you know, in, in dealing with that. However, to think back to who I am now and I'd be like, wow, I still kind of blame myself for even letting that happen. Like, even though I was... Couldn't have been no older than five, six years old. Couldn't have been no older than four, five, six years old. Anywhere during, somewhere in that time period. It, it can get tricky moving forward. Can get tricky. It can get tricky moving forward. If you was one of those people that you might have came up in the household where you was getting your head whooped around all the time. And you weren't even no bad child nothing like that. But you was getting your head whooped off. A lot of times we see that as regular. Because in the black family, what they say, you know, they don't spare the rod on them kids and whatnot. We very much have a slave mentality when it comes to raising our kids. The first thing we think to do when they get out of order is lay the smack down. But the crazy thing is, that's how we were kept in order as slaves. But we put that mentality into our raising of our children. Then we turn around and tell them, don't be violent. <laughs> we turn around and tell them, don't be a violent animal when you out there in the street. But at the same time, we tell them, our young black men, don't be no punk. Don't let nobody take nothing from you. If somebody hits you, you better hit them harder. We don't teach walk away from nothing. Ain't it don't tattletale, right? AKA don't snitch. One go down, we all go down, right? These are the mentalities that we teach our children and wonder why they so aggressive, wonder why they so quick to handle problems and not, not go tell mama, not go talk with mama before they go peel somebody's cat back. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They don't go talk with daddy before they go peel somebody cat back because they ain't, they ain't prone. They ain't, we not supposed to talk about the tough stuff. We supposed to handle that. You know, that's what we taught. We taught to handle that. You, you handle that. You a man. Do what a man do. Figure it out. Right. Sometimes ain't always that simple. So we grow when we had these complexes to where. We might be the aggressor. We might come up getting our head whooped. Then we turn into the whooper. Or that same thing, getting your head whooped off, might turn you into a victim. All you know is how to back down when, when it get crazy and somebody is reprimanding you. All you know is to go into a hole, to cow up, to get small. All you know is I don't have no power to do nothing about this situation. I just got to take it how I go. Because you're so used to what you do wrong or when somebody feels that you do wrong, they go into the extreme on you. And you ain't never learned how to get out of that being the victim. You ain't never learned how to not cower when things get crazy. You ever seen somebody, you know, Get into, get into an altercation or somebody get to yelling at them and whatnot next wise and you could just see them getting smaller and smaller like they're shrinking inside they self and whatnot like they just don't know how to stand up and speak for they self and say hey and shoot back and forth or you shooting at me I'm shooting back and I don't mean in the sense of actually shooting I mean in the sense of this you might have seen that before yeah those are those people that have been beaten into a corner and have not learned how to be like the fox that gets back into a corner and fight back. All they know is as soon as something happens and they get crazy, they go right back into that corner. They go right back into that corner. You see? But all these things can add up and, and give you anxieties. 
all these things can can take over your brain, take over your psyche to the point where you are like almost having an out of body experience. Like you know that these thoughts are consuming you, but and you you're seeing it, but you can't somehow break out of it. So that being said, hey, when it get like that, you got to do what you got to do. You got to figure it out. But it's easier to figure it out than you think. Talk about it. Talk about it. Somebody want to hear you. Somebody's willing to hear you. Pick up some of them 800 numbers and call some of them, 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 them therapy chat lines or whatnot. Hey, man, whatever you got to do. You know, you might not be in the church. You might not be religious, X, Y, Z. That don't mean you can't seek God. You might not be religious. I'm not religious. However, I do believe in God. I do praise God. I do give thanks to God giving me the power to have this godly experience to be able to do something here on earth, mold something, birth something, change something, make something better. You know, not just use my life to destroy, but actually build. Things of that nature. So, um, yeah, if you got to go to the church and talk with a pastor, if you got to go to the mosque and talk with some of them good Muslim brothers, wherever you got to go, man, to get some good sound advice, to get some, 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 some structure, go ahead and do that. You can't be wrong for that. You understand? But mental health is real. Anxiety is real. Depression is real. Don't feel bad if you feel like you're going through these things. You got a friend in me. True story. You already know that. But I just wanted to tap in on that. Hope this video hits somebody and um, make them feel better about whatever they going through. And know that, you know, anything going to see you right and anything going to be all right. You know, I'm going to keep it 50 Fifth Street. <laughs> Word up, though. Hey, it is what it is. You can't hide from the truth. You know, you can't hide from it because it's going to always be on you. No matter what you wear to cover it up, it's going to always be on you. So you can't hide from it. You know, try to run to it. Try to run to it. You'd be surprised as to who is willing to hear you. You'd be surprised at who who will lend a helping hand when it comes to situations like this. And sometimes the help is not always going to be from the people that we expect it to be from. Know that. So keep your eyes and your ears open. Keep your options open. And remember, everything going to see all right, everything going to be all right. That's a true story. You already know that. Tap in with your boy. We'll be back with some more of that. True story, no more. You know what I do. Give you that news you can use. Like and subscribe if you're digging the vibe. You heard? Yeah. Comment down below. You know, mash that like button one time. One time. You go ahead and hit that like you're horn in traffic. Bam, bam, bam. Go ahead and hit that. You know, support the channel. True story, no more. We'll be back with some more, more sooner than later. Never been a hater. 100.